stuff, they forecast that quick, better than human guys. So probably science is there. Greatness, not ours. Because so far, we are not able to forecast earthquake. But they do. Ants are able to do that. Rats, not well. Cats, they also forecast. So who is brighter in terms of knowledge? That man or other creatures? All other creatures. We have seen many animals migrating from place to place. We know many birds migrating from place to place because they know the nature. They read the nature and they take well care, good care to protect themselves, not disturbing the nature. We spoil the nature for our own survival. And ultimately we spoil ourselves. How great man is? You know well, there is a layer around the earth that protects the life on this earth. What is that? Ozone. 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 And there was a big breach, I think bigger than the Australian continent, bigger than the Australia. Who made it? Since how long did that layer was existing? Do you know? Do you have an idea? Since billions of years, trillions of years maybe, the layer was well protected. I think it was surviving, of course. Nobody meddled with it. But it is the man who is now spoiling that, causing a big breach to that. And within, within the span of how many years? Do you have an idea? Max. Maximum. That is the greatness of us. <laughs> By causing the breach to the ozone, whose life is deteriorated? It is only ours, not the animals, not the birds. They are pretty much safe because they know how to protect themselves. But unfortunate guys, we are. We hit our own legs, we cut our own roots, and we become victims for our own actions. We dig our own pits. That is what we are. So God comes only for man's sake. To teach him good. To give him right guidance. To make him live with righteousness. It was long ago, few million years ago, God appeared on this Earth, to teach man how to conduct himself. What should be the nature of the man? How man has to live? What is the duty of a dog? To watch. The duty of a monkey is to move from branch to branch. And what is the duty of the man? To realize the self, then why are you struggling for job? And why are you just, you know, craving to earn money? And why you need to develop the science? Is it really necessary to realize the self? You need not to realize the self. Because you yourself are the self. 
You are the self. What you need to realize yourself. Huh? You need to realize something which is better than you, which is greater than you. Then what you need to realize, if at all you want to realize, what is greater than us? So if at all you want, you wish to realize something, what you need to realize? Realize God. But it's very difficult thing to realize God anyway. Because he's a very big guy. Once upon a time, there was a big farmer. And that farmer, one day, stopped his tilling the ground and sat somewhere in the middle of the farm and started thinking, oh, great God is. How did he create the whole sky? How did he make these clouds? And how he created so much earth? And how much water? My God, God is really great. I want to know everything about God. And then he started thinking more and more about God stopping his own duty. Then after a while, God suddenly appeared in front of him and said, Hey, how are you? Then he asked, Who you are? I am God. Thank God. <laughs> you the God? Oh, I appreciate. So can you tell me how you became so great? And then he asked, how did you create the entire universe? Can you tell me something about it? God was surprised. <laughs> you know, because this guy, he didn't know what he was. And he wanted to know more about God. And then he asked, hey, why do you want to know about me? No, no, you created so much stuff, right? I also want to help you in some way possible. <laughs> really? He said, of course. God said, look, you are not even a peanut in my creation, do you know that? So first of all, take care of the peanuts. Start growing peanuts. <laughs> And then he started creating, he started growing peanuts. <laughs> God created this big universe, a vast universe. To realize God, we really need not think about God. We need not do anything to God. We need to know what we have to do here in this world. If we know how to do things in this world, for such people, Swarga Dwaram Apavrutam, the doors of the heaven always kept open. We crave to reach the heaven and open the doors and enter, not knowing what to do here. If you really want to go, if you really want to reach, if you really want to enjoy the things there, you have to know how to deal here with the people around you and with the objects that are around you. And that's all it is. That's why God appeared on this earth and became Brahma. The way to live with the people here the way to deal with is called dharma. Dharma means action. An action, if you do here,
that makes your life comfortable and also opens the doors to you to reach the eternal bliss. One action caters both the needs. You need not do one here, one day. You need not do something today and something tomorrow. Not to do one action that makes you live comfortable here and also provides the means to reach even the eternal abodes too. So the great scriptures revealed the secret how you can make the human life successful by giving a wonderful definition to the word dharma. What is dharma? Action. Yes. Yetaha abhyudaya nisreyasa siddhihi Saha dharma. Yataha by which action Abhyudaya benefit in this world. Nisreyasa reaching the eternal bliss are possible. Such an action is called dharma. So do it here. You live comfortable. And at the same time, your doors are always open and you can enjoy that ultimate bliss. But what is that? How to act? What is the action we need to do to show that God especially has taken an incarnation. He appeared on this earth and that is Rama Avatar. It is the great sage Valmiki who recorded the whole episode and presented it well to us without any distortions, without any exaggerations, and not probably, he must have missed a few, but it's okay. But what has to be and what should be known all that was mentioned in that scripture. And it's not a scripture that he created something, taking a pen and paper, but it is what exactly he recorded that had happened on the day. We call it as past record. And the name of the scripture is Ramayana. Ramayana is not like a book written by someone like War and Peace. It's a book that exactly happened. It talks about the thing. So, any event mentioned in Ramayana is what exactly had happened. But people may not believe in that one. Somebody constructing a bridge over the sea without engineers and architects, without a big machinery, earth movers. It's very hard to believe in that, right? Because nowadays we see, if you want to construct a bridge, you need many days, many years at times. And in spite of your making all the effort, that bridge may not last long. And if it is in a country like ours, I think before the minister comes for opening it, it may fall down. Just like what happened in recent games in Delhi. Things may happen like that. But a bridge constructed by people who are known for, her, for their own indiscipline, monkeys. They became the engineers and they became the architects, they became the supervisors. They became the workmen and made the bridge between 
two countries. And the duration they have taken was just five days. Hundred yojanas. The distance they covered was hundred yojanas. <coughs> Ten yojanas width, hundred yojanas length was the bridge. And the bridge was done just within five days. The record was well maintained. How much area was covered during the first day? How much area on the second day? And how much on the third and fourth and fifth? By end of fifth day, they landed in Lanka. No curing after construction. As they started constructing, thus they started moving over the bridge too. And just they landed the moment they've done with it. And you can see that we see them today. There are recent scholars talking about the period of Rama as 5114 BC. Somebody is making research. Because they say the eclipse, the Kara and Dushna were talking about during the war with Rama, was exactly happened. And also the day when Rama left the summer and the birth star of Rama's and the placement of the planetary system and also the day they mentioned when he entered Lanka and when the war was concluded and when Rama left Lanka and reached Bharatvaya Ashram taking all these dates into a consensus they said the age of Rama's birth was 5114 or 17 BC they just very recently they published somewhere. But we are so surprised why they are not able to really assess because for every 5,000 years the cycle repeats. See, today morning you saw sun. After one year also you see sun there only. And of course, one month before you may see sun in some direction. One month later, you may see the sun's direction a little bit moves here and there. But after one year, you see the sun there only. Because it's 24 hour cycle and 365 day cycle. That's how it goes. Nature is pretty much perfect, you know, my friends? Nature is really perfect. So the time never changes. And the natural phenomena also will not change. They keep rotating in the same way. If you observe something 5,000 years ago, after 5,000 years, again the same natural phenomenon will be there. And again next 5,000 years. The cycle is really great. For every cycle, probably once one thing happened, in 5,000 years, and then things probably after 50,000 years also may be repeating in the same way. <coughs> Ramayana did not take place in 5,000 years BC. According to a calendar, the age of Kali, we are living in Kali, you are right? Do you know the age of Kali? 432,000 years. 4, 3, 2, and 3 zeros. Okay? And into 2, that is Dwapara Yuga. Into 3, that is Treta Yuga. Into 4, that is Krita Yuga. 4 Yugas. Called Chetur Yuga. And if you calculate all the four, do you know how much the figure comes? Again, four, three, two, four zeros. 
See, the mathematical calculation is really wonderful. 4, 3, 2, 3, 0 is Kali Yuga. And if you make the Chatur Yuga's period, another 0 is added. That's all it is. That means 4.32 million years. Very simple. And the calculation exactly goes. That is a wonderful thing. Because that's the nature. There's a law of this universe. The law of this cosmos. That never changes. People keep changing. You are here today. And you may not be here tomorrow. Probably yesterday you were not here. Right? But there was man prior to us on this earth. Before we born, there was someone. And even when we go, there will be someone. But the Manava Jati, what we call the Manava Jati, the race continues. Not only the species of man, but every species, whatever you see today, keeps continuing. But the figures will change. You see the birds, right, in the sky? The bird, what you see today, will go, but another bird will be there in the sky. Have you seen the water in the river? The water, what you see at this moment, will not be there the next moment, but water will be there. The species, 